listening to a special episode of Neo Cash Radio. In the studio with you, it's JJ. In this special episode, I interview Lior Yafe, the co founder, managing director, and senior developer at Jalurida. We discuss an overview of NXT, Ardor, and the upcoming Ignis ICO. Lior, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, JJ. Just give us a brief uh, description about yourself and, and a little bit of your history with the NXT and then Jalurida. Okay, so so I've been a kind of a computer kid from the 80s. I always liked uh, messing up with computers, software, and and so on. Um, I, uh, you know, after finished my study, I, I worked for uh, several cor- uh, large corporations, um, uh, mostly developing enterprise uh, software, mostly in the Java. Um, about uh, three years ago, sometimes in 2014, I, f- I uh, got introduced to cryptocurrencies in general. And of course, as like anyone else, I started with Bitcoin, but um, I quite uh, quite early I understood that Bitcoin is is already too complicated to get in with too much politics and really difficult to 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 move things around. So I looked for a project that will uh, that where I can actually get uh, into it with um, you know with my development skills. And sure. that's where I found out about NXT. Okay. Now, but now you were you were using Bitcoin, or you were you a Bitcoin user at the time, or were you just sort of uh, studying it? I, I, of course, I used Bitcoin for uh, you know I I bought some Bitcoin, transacted a little bit, but sure. uh, but but never been a real uh, Bitcoin, uh, uh, very heavy user of Bitcoin. So, what was your first impression getting involved with NXT, and, what, and then we'll go into what it, what NXT really is. But what was your first impression of that? Um, I, I, at the beginning, when I saw uh, when I learned about Bitcoin and later about NXT, I was really, really amazed. I mean, it's the it's the idea of this decentralization, the right. way of how we distribute the trust. To uh, to many 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 uh, uh, entities which do not trust each other and working together to decide about the right order of transactions in ledgers and preventing double spend, I think this technology is amazing. Yeah. Um, so NXT is uh, it's it's there's a lot to it, but let's just sort of start at the beginning and and let's talk about NXT being a proof of stake blockchain. Um, so so. How does how is that working out? How's the proof of stake? Uh, there's been a, you know there's a lot of critics out there uh, about proof of stake, but NXT has been doing it for a while. How is how's the blockchain been working and and uh, functioning? Yep. So so the blockchain is uh, functioning and working uh, very well. Its proof of stake is actually very stable, and the way it's implemented in NXT is relatively simple, and it's really simple to understand. Uh, that how it works it actually makes sense uh, you you want me to go into actually explaining just a brief uh, a forging uh, example oh, explanation. okay so, so um, based on the previous block and uh, your um, and your account public key uh, uh, pseudo random num- number uh, by hashing it together a pseudo random number is generated multiply by your stake it gives you the time in which you are allowed to forge the next block instead of mining we call the creation of blocks uh, forging um, so uh, so the bigger the stake you have in the network the larger your chance to generate the next block but this is still pseudo random uh, algorithm okay. um, a- and of course uh, when the time when your uh, the time uh, is uh, right for your for your uh, workstation to generate the next block, it will generate it. But of course, every other node in the network repeats these calculations and makes sure that indeed you are uh, gen- you generated the the block according to all the protocol rules. Um, what's so the what's the block time uh, with NXT? A block time is one minute uh, on okay. average, of course. Um, 
And there's no, there's no fees. There's no like uh, you're not creating new NXT coins uh, when you create a block. Is that right? Right. The, there is no 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 new coins are created. Your only incentive is are the transaction fees that you receive right. from the transactions in the block. And uh, so getting into NXT now, there's a lot of different things you can do with the, the just the base the clients, like the, uh, the, the vanilla client that I've got and I've played with here. Um, to start out, you can, you can set an alias for yourself, um, something that Ethereum has just implemented basically with ENS. Um, and you can, <clears throat> there's, there's built in, uh, there's a bunch, bunch of built in functions. Why don't you just quick run down like a few of the, the big ones in the okay. client? All right, so so you start. We start with basic building blocks of uh, decentralized applications, like uh, as you said, the ability to register global aliases. We can register account properties, which are um, w which are properties associating with associated with a specific account. Uh, you can send messages between accounts. These messages can be encrypted. These can messages can be prunable, which means they can removed can be removed from the blockchain once they are no longer necessary. These nice. message encrypted messages can even be shared with a third party. So um, that's then. That's yeah, yeah. So, so just in case, you know, you share a message with your doctor and you want to share it encrypted with an expert, you can do that. Right. Um, we, we have a feature we call cloud data that allow you to, to upload any data to the blockchain. And again, this data is prunable. So it's not stored on the blockchain forever. We just store a cryptographic proof that it existed. So, so, so these, I call them, a, a, you know, basic building blocks for decentralized right. applications. Yeah. On, on top of that, we already have uh, built in, let's call them uh, smart contracts or features like asset exchange, um, marketplace, um, um, ability to uh, uh, anonymity features, um, voting, very advanced voting system, all already implemented. Everything is implemented with user interface. You don't need to revert to the command line for everything or develop your own UI. It all comes uh, working in the in the wallet itself. Um, well, basically, it, it, the NXT wallet and client does a lot of the functionality that, <clears throat> excuse me, that a lot of these new startup projects are that I'm seeing in in the token sales space there are there it's, it already does a lot of what uh, so many other projects are striving to do and, and it's just it's really impressive looking at what what it's capable of now and then looking forward to the next phase but 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 quick question it just it's just stunning to me how uh, you know maybe that that people don't know about it or or, or whatnot but um, it's just stunning that more people aren't on board with NXT because of all of the uh, the feature-rich, uh, the vanilla platform that just comes with all of these features built in. Mm -hmm. Are you? Is there like a marketing effort behind it, or are you just basically decided I'm gonna we're only gonna focus on the next generation right now? Um, what's 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 the sense in the office with that? Okay, so, so NXT, uh, you know, it started it it. it it didn't start as a very uh, well-funded uh, project. It's mostly an open source community effort. There are marketing efforts, but they are not on a global scale and they, they, and, and they, they are kind of uh, sporadic. Um, so so um, we, we definitely uh, could have done better job in marketing uh, this technology. Um, Having said that, there are many, many people who know about NXT, right. and, and and I think that in 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 some sense NXT uh, was rele released these features ahead of this time before people actually realized what it what it can do for them. Right. Um, but, but okay. But, but I think. Go, we, go ahead. 
Uh, I, I think overall we are doing quite well. Okay, I mean the the fact that NXT already exists all men, almost four years and that it has a very strong community be behind it and uh, and of course dedicated development team. I think that overall we are doing pretty good. I mean there are probably other projects that did better, but uh, but I think I'm I'm quite comfortable where with where we are now with NXT. All right, so the, what, what is billed as as NXT 2.0 is is what's called Ardor, and the Ardor platform uh, is it's it's really fascinating. I'm really excited about it. Why don't you just just give me a brief, um, I, I guess, a brief description of the evolution from NXT to Ardor, and sort of what what sort of separates the two of them? Oh, okay. Uh, sure. So let's m maybe in order to understand Ardor, let's take a step backward and understand what are the problems that we have with uh, blockchain technology today. Well, one of the fundamental problems is what we call the blockchain bloat, which means every transaction ever submitted to the blockchain will have to remain there forever. Uh, L long after the sender and recipient of these transactions are uh, no longer interested in it, it will stay in the blockchain because it's part of the consensus. Because block signature depends on the transactions in the block. And once, so you cannot remove the transa any transactions because then a uh, workstation joining the network won't be able to revalidate all the transactions and, and blocks and may end up on a on a fork on a malicious fork that someone else fed fed into them um, and this is a problem with all the blockchains today bitcoin ethereum nxt uh, whatever every transaction stays forever so yeah. we so with nxt we started by providing a local solution for this like for example when you send a message a large message in nxt the actual, actual content of the message is no longer part of the blockchain we only only the hash of the message is actually the something that remains in the blockchain forever so this was the first step um however once uh, and one more thing to add, if you like to prove that this message existed, uh, even after it's no longer in the blockchain, you can still do that because you still have the hash of the message stored in the blockchain. So, right. so after we implemented that, we started thinking, if we can do that for messages and for other uh, transaction types, why not do that for all the transactions? Okay, Why do we have to keep them forever if we no longer need them? Okay, let's just keep a cryptographic proof that this transaction existed so that if someone ever needs to prove it, they are still able to, but new nodes no longer need to validate and revalidate every transaction from the, from the Genesis block until today. Right. Okay, so here, so Ardor is the solution for this. Okay, so the way this solution works is that we separated the uh, transactions that affect the proof of stake uh, mechanism into apparent uh, blockchain and all the rest of the transactions, let's call them the smart contracts, the asset exchange, the voting, the marketplace and so on, these are delegated to, uh, to child chains because transactions which does not affect the account balances are not important to so to um, to save forever okay because the security of the network can remain the same without them right right okay so in ardor uh, so ardor is basically nxt plus okay you're right when you said it's nxt 2.0 um but it's NXT separated into parent uh, blockchain, which contains only the transactions that affect the balances of the forgers, and uh, child chain transactions and child chains, multiple child chains, which um, which actually uh, include the rest of the transactions, which are typically order of magnitude more transactions. Um, so, be, because they deal with the actual operational uh, transactions of the of the blockchain. Okay. 
Okay. So one of the first child chains. Can it, what, what wait, 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 I just want to say one more thing about yes. it. Yeah. These child chains, because they do not affect the balances of the forgers, they can be pruned. Okay. So after 24 hours, we can delete these transactions from the okay. blockchain and just leave a cryptographic proof on the prior chain that they actually existed. Nice. So, uh, excellent. The, and th and this, this whole method of, of removing the transactions, I mean, the, the blockchain bloat is really a serious problem when it comes to mobile devices. And, and it's, everything's going mobile, it seems. So the child, that, that, that structure, it seems like you could almost have I mean, could you have basically a full full node on your on your smartphone that only has the twenty four hour blocks? You know, is that sort of the idea? Well, in fact, you can even have a NXT today on a, on a smartphone if you really like, because um, because the proof of stake mechanism does not require the huge uh, you know the the minor competition the the. Right reliance of on huge dedicated hardware in order to generate blocks because blocks are generated based on your stake not on your hashing power uh, but, but having said that with ardor uh, we can probably reduce the number of transactions stored on the blockchain by order of magnitude I mean, whether or not it will make sense to run on a mobile device, I, I w I'm not sure because, you know, mobile device is sometimes disconnected and yeah. sometimes uh, has the da data plan that a lot does not allow you a lot of uh, bandwidth and, and yeah. other problems um, that does not justify running a full node on a mobile device. But but NXT and Ardor can be run on a Raspberry Pi, for example, or on very cheap uh, VPS hardware uh, at, uh, at Amazon or, or anywhere in the cloud. So. Okay, so so let's get into Ignis then, and let's sort of touch on that. And in combination, so there's Ardor, but you, you can't just do anything with Ardor you have to use the child chains in combination with Ardor. And the first one is Ignis. And so tell us about Ignis. Right. So, so, um, so a, a, as you said, Ardor is, uh, we will only include the Ardor parent chain will only include the, the basic transactions that affect the balances of the forgers. Um, the first child chain transaction is actually a kind of a successor of NXT. Even though it does not replace NXT, it's, it will run side by side, but it can do everything that NXT does today. That's going to be Ignis. Um, um, so we are also going to migrate some of the entities uh, that are already registered on the NXT blockchain into Ignis, so that the, so that you can almost transparently migrate your application from NXT to uh, to Ardor. Excellent. And there's quite a few of those. Um, I, don't, I mean, we don't, I don't want to get into that and then distract from what we're talking about here. But if you listen to neocashradio.com, we've talked about, uh, we'll talk about more of them. But um, so, so Ignis here is going to basically be with your first uh, usable portion of the Ardor. And then you, you plan to open it up to allowing more child chains. And then eventually um, people can just come along and create their own. Uh, I think that's, isn't that the long-term goal? Yes, so so, um, so Ignis will be the first child chain, and it also has so, some other properties which are specific, uh, as uh, you know, the entities from NXT and a few other things that I, I can touch later about. Um, with regards to creation of child chains, um, with NXT itself, I, I think we, uh, reflecting back, I think we made a mistake in that we made the creation of some entities like assets and uh, currencies too, too easy, too uh, inexpensive. And okay. this caused uh, people to just create uh, toy projects without any real business uh, behind them. And, and, and it sort, sort of um, diluted the value of the whole, of the whole thing, we, which could have been uh, managed better. Um, so we don't w want to make the creation of a child chain something too simple, okay? okay? We want every child chain to have a real 
business case behind it. I mean, be it a real business or, a, or what we call peg child chain or some community pro, uh, project, but something that has significant value. Are you thinking that you would, you would require like a, a stake? Like, uh, for example, like Dash Masternode is a thousand Dash uh, that you have to stake and, and hold into a escrow, basically, or, or at least tell it it's an escrow. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Like not only this, there, there will be, uh, first of all, there will be transaction fee for issuing child chains, but at least initially we want to control the issuance of child chains, which means only Jitterida would be able to authorize the creation of a new child chain. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the future, we might open it up to uh, users to create their own child chains. The technology is not ready for this at the moment. Uh, it's, so it's not, it's not only uh, bi from business perspective. So, um, it's, it seems smart because, it, I mean, if everybody went tomorrow and created their own child chain, I, I don't know uh, what sort of network congestion that might, might cause, but, uh, you know, sort of slowly, slow rolling into it uh, is, is probably a smart thing. Um, so let's go back one step. Uh, you, there was initially there was the NXT um, coin or token, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Do you call it a coin? Uh, call, it, call it a token. Token. Yeah. Okay. And then the when when the plans for Ardor came out, you 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 did basically a, a token issuance for the Ardor token, isn't that right? Yes. So, so with proof of stake uh, coin in general, you have to somehow create the initial distribution. So, for example, NXT itself, the initial distribution was for users that paid to some anonymous developer that posted the announcements on Bitcoin Talk. Okay, so it created a relatively bad uh, distribution where only there are only few stakeholders that hold huge amounts of NXT. And, and this is a problem that haunted us for quite a while, even I, I think that today it's less of an issue. So we wanted to, av uh, to avoid this with our door. So what we did with our door, we distributed our door over a period of three months based on snapshot we took from the NXT blockchain. So you received Ardor by holding NXT. That's how we distributed the parent chain tokens, which are now registered as an asset on the NXT network. And you can actually freely trade them, even though Ardor is not on mainnet uh, itself. Okay, yep. so, this, so this is about Ardor. Yep. With Ignis, we want to also raise uh, funds for the continuous development of uh, uh, of all this uh, wonderful ecosystem. Right. So what we do with Ignis, we will um, we will send. Uh, I mean, half half of the Ignis will go to existing NXT holders. We we like whoever holds NXT, and we, and we want to re to reward them. The other half of the INIC, Ignis are going to be sold to uh, sold as an ICO to uh, using NXT. So, so uh, will you be using the NXT uh, standard client, the platform itself, to sell these? Yes. The, okay. the way uh, the way the crowd sale would work is that say, think about um, think about ICO over Ethereum, which creates an uh, ERC20 token and and uh, and people buy it uh, um, and people just buy it on the website. So so in NXT we actually have um, I'm proud to say, but we have much better uh, mechanisms to perform such crowd sale. Um, what we uh, are using is uh, call it a built-in functionality we call controllable currency. Okay. The idea of controllable currency is that it's a token registered on the NXT blockchain that after that you can buy from the issuer of the of the currency, but after you bought it, you cannot trade it. Okay, Wh which means you cannot sell it yourself, right. and you cannot transfer it be be uh, between accounts. So it's kind of a centralized registry of uh, token balances, the, okay. con the controllable currency. What this allows us 
is to actually perform this uh, our ICO in a very controlled manner. When we released, instead of uh, having the risk or maybe the <laughs> the, ch the good, the chance that everything will be bought in 15 minutes by three whales and <laughs> and you know and everybody else will be left with nothing, or or that while uh, while we are still selling, people will already start trading it between themselves, which is also problematic. Uh, with controllable currency, we control the release of the currency. So right. we start first batch um, of uh, 16 million Ignis will be released at a certain price. Once it is sold out, people cannot trade it for the price. It's just registered on the blo on the NXT blockchain, and we will release another uh, another batch at a slightly uh, lesser, uh, lower price. Um, the, the price, and then in terms of price, you're talking in the terms of NXT tokens. So the price correct. of would be relative to NXT. Correct. Uh, and, and in each case, uh, that ratio would, would change. <clears throat> right. Just for uh, the at home. Right. Price of uh, Ignis will be denominated in NXT. First buy batch will give you one Ignis for 0 0.4 NXT. Second batch for, for bo batch for 0 0.5 and 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 so on. Um, okay. So so we, so we are going to sell Ignis and yes. collect NXT. Right. Um, uh, then. Since we uh, have a lot of expenses in euros, we will uh, need to sell uh, part of this NXT to exchange it probably to Bitcoin and then to and then to fiat uh, in order to pay uh, to pay expenses. Um, Right, no, makes sense. I mean, you, <laughs> you got to pay people to write the code and, and all the, the UI and the graphics and legal stuff. I mean, it's just keep the lights on. Just that adds up. Exactly. Um, so, so, and then af after all the sales are done, then you basically have a snapshot and um, then th what happens then? Okay, so 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 maybe one thing to say, be, because we have the ability, because of the controllable currency, we uh, we hold the um, the crowd sale in several rounds. Which what what this does, it it allows us to sell the NXT we collected in round X, while we are ramping up uh, marketing and the uh, promotion of uh, of stage X plus one. Okay, right. so, so so this makes sure we have enough liquidity to actually sell the uh, the NXT we collected. So we are not just stuck with um, hundreds of millions that if we start selling we will crush crush the market. Right. right, um, right. Okay, but but after all rounds of NXT has been sold, or or uh, nobody wants to buy the remaining tokens, what we are going to do is we already have the controllable currency as a as a registry of the balances for each um, um, for, for each uh, stakeholder uh, for each account, and then we are going to launch Ardor itself. The Initial balances of the Ardo parent chain are going to be uh, are already recorded as an asset on the NXT blockchain. We will just take it from there one one to one. The okay. initial balances of Ignis will be based on a snapshot of the existing NXT holdings. This will uh, be used to distribute half of the Ignis. The other half of the Ignis will be distributed based on the crowd sale, on the controllable currency bought in the crowd sale. Okay. So basically, the, the art, if, if, if a user or a listener out there is, is using NXT now and they have art or tokens in their assets or wherever they have them held, th that will be transferred onto the art or parent chain um, when when the whole launch happens now, will this will they leave the NXT? Will they be uh, removed from the NXT chain? In the uh, asset, yes, the outdoor asset will be. Uh, there will be a uh, during the outdoor distribution. There will also be a hard fork in NXT that will lock up outdoor, so that there is no 
uh, we, we are afraid of some scammers that continue to trade ardor on the NXT blockchain even after it's already snapshotted. Okay. So, so, so there will be a hard fork which will lock the ardor uh, asset for uh, for trading on the NXT blockchain. Okay. Um, um, the Ignis uh, um, uh, the Ignis snapshot uh, of NXT NXT of course will continue to trade. Um, but the Ignis snapshot can be always reproduced and the controllable currency for Ignis cannot be traded anyway so so we don't have a problem with that um, okay, so going okay so so after that happens and we'll go we'll, we'll get more a little bit more in Ardor in a second but as yeah. as far as NXT goes after this whole switchover uh, from what I've read and what I understand uh, on the information available, you, you will be looking to sort of market NXT as a private blockchain solution. Is that right? Uh, not necessarily. NXT will continue to exist as public blockchain. It's sure. a very functional blockchain. And I think that once, I and I hope that once people will see how you can very easily use it to perform ICOs. For example, people will uh, will use it for their own ICO uh, because it allows you to to the, the good thing about NXT is that everything in NXT is much much simpler. You don't need to develop smart contract in some weird uh, programming language. That it's enough that you made a single bug and people will exploit you and steal all your phones. Uh, we provide you a functional ICO platform w with right. NXT. We provide you a functional voting platform. I, I can still see many people using NXT. Yeah. And especially for a uh, private blockchain, because private blockchains are the proof of stake is ideal for uh, private blockchains. Because in private blockchains, the minor competition of the proof of work uh, a blockchain does not make any sense. Sure. So, so the first thing that the guys that are trying to uh, to set uh, to sell Bitcoin private chains or Ethereum private chains, the first thing they do they replace the consensus mechanism. But, but, but the consensus mechanism is the most important <laughs> a piece of of a blockchain. When you replace it, you lose all the security and all the experience and stability that you already gained by running in a public blockchain. So, so it really doesn't make sense to use proof of work blockchain in a private chain no, uh, context, and NXT fit I fits ideally into the uh, private blockchains, and 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 we have quite a lot of experience already with uh, prototyping and 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 many uh, uh, and there's quite a few deals in the pipeline for uh, for private private blockchain solutions Excellent. for NXT. Well, one thing I want to, you know, one thing to note, and, and this is an important factor coming up with, uh, I believe, Bitcoin's power usage uh, just to secure the network right now. And this is before it splits into however many coins it splits into. Uh, it's about the size of Denmark. You know, just securing the Bitcoin network is enough power uh, of, a, of a small nation. And this is this is going to be a problem with, I mean, you look at right now, you have Bitcoin that's having this power draw, and then you have Ethereum that has proof of work. And you have all these other coins and, and things. The thing about an NXT that really strikes me is that it, it seems like it is very conservative about resources and the blockchain, both, both data resources and electricity. Um, is this by design or is this, so, I mean, are you sort of moving in this direction on purpose? Uh, oh, of course. I mean compared to Bitcoin, which has the electricity consumption of Denmark, I think the whole NXT network has a, a consumption of a single household, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> or maybe at least American household. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, okay may maybe no, much less than a neighborhood. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Uh, and of course, this is by design. I mean, it makes much more sense to create something sustainable. Yeah. Uh, than, um, and I don't think I don't think Satoshi, when when he he or she created Bitcoin, uh, wanted that to <laughs> to know to spend the electricity of Denmark on consensus and to have uh, I don't know ten. 
uh, entities generating all the blocks eventually or, yeah, or something I mean, like that. Yeah, that's pretty this. much what it is. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so, okay, so let me, let me, do you have dates in mind for this, uh, this your ICO? Is there a, is there a timeline? Right. Uh, the timeline, it's, it's published in our website, as uh, with ICO uh, page in jellerida.com. Okay. That should be the only source of information. Uh, first stage starts at August 5th. Um, they're going to be, each stage is going to run for a week. Then we have a couple of week or one week break between stages. And, um, and after the last, the fifth stage, we have another two weeks to, you know, process all the information, make final preparations. And then hopefully we launch Ardor on mainnet by uh, early November. Wow, that's, um, that's moving right along. Excellent. Uh, yes, time flies. <laughs> so, and so, just to be to reiterate, the, this is going to happen on top of the NXT platform. And if users, uh, or contributors, want to partake in this, they will have to have NXT in their account before, of course, they can make this sort of purchase. And then uh, they, they should expect that they can't move or trade this token after they buy it. So, just to sort of a heads up, right? Correct. Um, we will try. We we'll really, really try to make it easy for for people to buy to buy Ignis and not to fall for scammers or lose their phones in all kind of ways. So the way we 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 will do that is first of all in the wallet itself. We are going to issue a new release uh, probably next week that will um, include a dedicated page to the ICO, and and then you. You know, you, you won't need to understand how to trade currencies, which is a bit counterintuitive in NXT. All you will have is a, a amount, no, number of Ignis that you want to buy, and a buy button. Okay. Okay. If you, but of course you first need to get NXT, and 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 getting NXT again, we we'll try to make it very very simple in the wallet. We already have a in built in the integration with Shapeshift and Changely that, um, uh, that is operational from inside the wallet. You don't need to leave the wallet. You say which, uh, which other uh, Bitcoin or any al other altcoin you want to use. We provide you a deposit address. You deposit it, and, uh, and and in few minutes you see it in you see the NXT in your wallet. It also initializes your account with a public key in the process. And, and uh, yeah, uh, we, that's that's the other thing to briefly touch on. And I I'm, I should have brought this up earlier, but uh, I recently had a friend that was opening um, like he was he was getting an NXT wallet, and the public key thing um, was sort of. Uh, I mean, he, he, he had some difficulties because he was trying to move it from an exchange to his wallet and he, he didn't know where to put the public key in the exchange's output, uh, you know, fields. So it, it is important that if you get an NXT wallet going, um, that you have the public key to make that first transaction, right? Just touch on that for a moment. Okay. So, so, um, so, so the public is issue is is like this: when you fund your account, all you need to provide is your NXT address. The NXT address is basically a, a long, a Java long variable. It's 64 bit. Okay. So, so when so when you fund your account by only giving your address on the blockchain. The, the address that exists is only the 34-bit account ID and 34-bit security is not enough. I mean, today it's still, it's still okay, but there is always a chance that, that in the future it will be, uh, people will be able to, to guess your, uh, your NXT address. Uh, to, to somehow brute force it and, and take the funds that you just paid. So, uh, give me a sec, I'll close the door. Um, uh, so, you have to register, there is another action that you have to register the 256-bit public key in the blockchain, okay? okay. Um, and, and this can be done in two ways. One is to issue an outgoing transaction. So, you can fund your account with your NXT address and then perform 
uh, and outgoing transactions using your passphrase, which is pretty much your private key. And, and this registered the, uh, the public key in the blockchain, and then you have 256-bit uh, security, which is unbreakable in uh, today's standard and probably uh, forever. Um, so the other uh, way, the other so way. The other way is to ask the exchange or whoever fonts your account to you provide them the public key and they uh, should send it in the recipient public key field of the uh, of the transactions that fonts your account. Okay. Yep. So, so so the process is you log into your wallet using your passphrase, r find what your public key is, give it to the exchange. And the exchange sends the fonts not just to your public address, but to your public, but you also specify your public key. Th there were a lot of issues with this in the past. Um, most exchanges support the, the, this public key registration, uh, including if you do it with Shapeshift, it's, it's currently working transparently. Um, yep. With uh, Changely, I'm still it's almost working transparently it will by the probably by the ico time it will so so uh excellent Th yeah that, that's just so so people are are uh, aware of this but if you are if you just downloaded your nxt client today and you just you open it up and you, you record your passphrase and you get all that stuff done as soon as you get op it open at the very top of it you're going to find your public key displayed and a little message saying that you should uh, include this in the, the first transaction, uh, either in or out. So uh, yeah. write that down or grab that as soon as you see it and copy it and stick it in your clipboard or, or, or just stick it somewhere because um, if you're out doing stuff and that screen goes or you close that little message, um, mm -hmm. you'll be looking for it. Uh, just a tip. So mm -hmm. let's, let's uh, we've talked about NXT, we've talked about uh, the Ardor and Ignis. Now, let, now let's sort of uh, end the show a little bit talking about some of the other projects that are going to be migrating to the Ardor chain and just sort of pick a couple um, to, uh, to tell our listeners about that, that, uh, that you either like or that you uh, think are going to make a big difference. Um, oh, okay. I, I just want to say a few more words sure. about about Ardor and what it provides. So, yeah. in addition to solving the blockchain bloat, Ardor solves uh, two other problems which are very uh, basic in the blockchain uh, arena today. Um, so, one of them is the problem that nearly every blockchain uses the same token for the security of the network and for the operational transactions. And this causes a lot of problems. Like, for example, think about, uh, let's take uh, Ethereum and uh, g give me some kind of token on top of Ethereum. Uh, oh, 10x pay tokens, uh, Bancor. Bancor, okay. Um, so you want, when you want to trade Bancor on Ethereum to send it from account to account, you also need to pay uh, gas for yep. the transaction fee. So, so basically, you need to perform a transaction in two diff denominated in two different uh, currencies um, okay. with a bank bank or token and with a gas token or or ether token okay now now try developing uh an application on top uh that actually uses this token and try to explain your users why they need to deal with two tokens now now uh, th think about you buy in the supermarket you go to the cashier and they tell you um okay this cost uh this cheese cost uh, three dollars but you also need to pay uh, two euro cents <laughs> in order for us to pass it through the <laughs> um through the cashier uh, <laughs> through right. the ca cash registry um, so it doesn't it doesn't make sense and 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 Ardor, because of the separation to child chains, it actually allows you to deal with a child chain and to delegate the, the payment of transaction fees, not to the user itself, but to some uh, managing entity of the child chain. 
Right. We, co- we call this guy a bundler. It's a new function, okay, that it's responsible for taking the child chain transactions and bundling it into and uh, registering it in the parent chain while getting uh, the transaction fees in the ch- denominated in the child chain and paying the transaction fees denominated in the parent chain. And it, it, it's a bit confusing, but uh, well, what it allows you, it, it allows you to deal with a child chain does, that does not have any transaction fees. If, if you are the business owner, for example, you can pay the fees for your uh, users. Something that I don't know of any other uh, um, blockchain technology that allows you to, to do something like this. So um, you're basically taking the, the, the gas, it basically helps pay for uh, the things that happen and whatnot, and sort of greasing the, greasing the wheels of the, the blockchain, if you will. But uh, the, you're saying that in the sense of a child chain, that all of that cost is then offloaded onto whoever is managing and owning the child chain, and that they can just sort of, uh, like, that's their overhead. That's, you know, the, the, the lease, if you will, on that space that they're renting in, in the blockchain. And then right. they're basically paying someone to bundle their, their child chain data onto the Ardor main chain, and they're paying them in the child token. And then the, the guy is then, uh, the, the other person, the bundler, is taking then bundling that with an Ardor token. They're paying Ardor to bundle it onto the chain. And you have this sort of market effect where bundlers, you know, it could be free market people just doing this, but based on which child chain is, is um, you know, has contracts out there to bundle versus, and there, there could be different incentives at play and, and, and different ways that sort of the, the child chain money leaves the chain, so to speak, and then it comes back in if that person, it, it just seems like a really interesting economic uh, situation there. Yeah. So, so, so first, there so, so could be like on Ignis, they're going to be uh, a, a bundler mark, bundling market, because on Ignis there will, there will be transaction fees paid in Ignis, and the bundler will get the Ignis and pay the Ardor okay. in order to bundle the transaction. But, but on let's say that we have now a child chain dedicated for a voting in some uh, shareholder voting. Okay. Okay. You you don't want the shareholders to to worry about transaction fees. Okay. They don't. You don't even want them to know that they are using a blockchain. But with today's technology, you have to somehow fund their account so that they can transact. Okay. Yep. But with with Ardor, you no longer need to do that. As long as there is one entity which are willing to bundle these transactions, even without transaction fees, uh, you you can operate the child chain with zero fee. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so okay. So that's. Uh, another very uh, uh, interesting uh, use case. Okay, then there's there's an, another big problem is that uh, if you look at today's tokens, like tokens you issued on top of Bitcoin or on top of Ethereum, you uh, let's say it represents. Um, um, I- investment in your company, okay, tokens, uh, y- you still, in, typically you can't pay uh, all your expenses in, uh, in, it, in Ether or in uh, Bitcoin, you need to convert it to fiat, uh, b- but your uh, token is always, the value of your token is denominated in the blockchain uh, token, in the blockchain main main token. Yeah. So, so, uh, so increases or decreases in, uh, in the blockchain token value can, can affect your business model significantly. Right. Um, and of course, in order to buy the token, you need to go to a centralized exchange and exchange for fiat and do all kind of uh, all, all kind of, pro- of difficult processes. Uh, what, what we are planning to do with Ardor is to have what we call a pegged child chain. The pegged child chain will be the value of the token of this child chain, special child chain type will be pegged to some based asset like euro, like bitcoin, like, um, I don't know, maybe like gold or, or something. Wow. As, long, as long as someone, there will be a third party 
trusted third parties that ensure this peg. Think about large financial uh, institutions that cooperate with us. Then when you issue an asset on, on the Ardor platform, you can actually trade it directly with Euro or directly with Bitcoin or all of them at the same time. Okay? Yeah. As, as long as this peg is guaranteed, as long as you trust the third party to guarantee the peg. Yeah, right. Okay. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's, that, that sounds like uh, geez, another, another application on top of uh, the, the platform that, once again, as you said, solves one of the problems of the volatility. And if we've seen it in Ethereum a lot, if, if uh, Ether has you know, an up and down day, it's going to take a lot of the tokens with it on that mm -hmm. ride. Right. And so you're saying that you're trying to isolate or insulate some of that volatility from the token market. Exactly. So, so it's it's a trade-off. You uh, you have to give some trust, but you take away the volatility of the of the blockchain token from the equation. Excellent. Um, I I just like to touch one more thing, and this is a, a bit forward-looking. Uh, another uh, issue is today that every transaction that you ever submit to the blockchain has to be processed by every node. And when you have thousands of nodes times millions of transactions, you quickly realize that this is not sustainable. Sure. Okay. Yep. But what if we now have kind of um, ecosystem that you have the Ardor parent chain and multiple child chains, each one dedicated to specific uh, use case. One for asset exchange, one for voting, one for settlement of uh, mobile roaming, one for user identity, one for uh, uh, shipping documents, okay? Mm -hmm. the, why, do, uh, why does a, a workstation that is only interested in uh, voting need to process the shipping document? <laughs> okay, right, right. doesn't make any sense. But w what if you could separate the ch each child chain to its own subnet where only one or few workstations on this subnet actually communicated with the main chain and, and the other uh, and the rest of the network? You can make, a, 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 you can create a much more efficient uh, a network of blockchain nodes and offload most of the processing from the from most of the of the uh, endpoint uh, workstations, so that so that they can focus on their own uh, specific use case. Right. Would this also uh, benefit privacy as well, or is is that just um, pr privacy? Uh, I would say as long as you can. Uh, with for for more privacy you'll need a permissioned blockchain okay. right now the public blockchain is not permissioned we do have solution in private blockchain for uh, for permissions would you uh, would that be able like would someone be able to make a permission to child chain on top of our door um possibly in the future not uh, not today right uh, I, I mean, there are many directions this technology can evolve. Oh, sure. Um, sure. Who knew that tokens would be such a huge thing all of a sudden? It's like, uh, <laughs> you know, watching this market evolve over the last six or seven months, it, it's just uh, amazing. People want to buy things and they want to spend their crypto uh, and then tokens. <laughs> yeah. it, but yes, I think... Makes... Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, I think that the, the the combination of all these ideas and uh, the fact that the, the the platform you're moving over to Ardor already has so much functionality built in, um, this it just it just looks like a lot of good things are, are potentially possible for the for uh, uh, the Jalu, Jalurida. If I, <laughs> right, I just gotta practice it. Jalurida. There we go. <laughs> so. Uh, you guys, you're, you're, you've got ICO coming up. There's a lot more. And, and listen, I'd, I'd love to have you on again uh, later down the road, but perhaps after the ICO where we can go a little more in-depth into how to use Ardor and the child chains and whatnot. Um, where, give us some contact info. Where, where can people find out more about what's going on? Um, okay, so, so first of all, I would go to jellorida.com. Uh, we have an ICO page, and that's that's the only place where we post official information about the ICO. 
Um, and then there is, uh, you know, the usual uh, NXT community, uh, uh, NXT chat Slack, uh, NXT forum, um, NXT.org, which is uh, run by the NXT Foundation, with which we are working closely. Um, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, we'll have, well, I'll have links on the blog post uh, when this is published, and then we'll have a link to uh, your website uh, that users can click through. And of course, Reddit. There's, you know, there's you'll find NXT uh, information, and then and Reddit actually has different channels for NXT and Ardor. And I, I don't know if there's an Ignis channel yet, but it's <laughs> there could be plenty of channels. Um, and so that yeah there, and then there's a bunch of other projects that are also migrating but you know what i think let's just stay focused on uh the nxt ardor and ignis platforms for this episode and uh so thank you so much for joining me i, I really appreciate the time you've taken and, and uh i appreciate sure, uh, jj jj I, I, can i add one more thing to sure. the to okay. complete the story Sure. The, the, there is we, uh, another issue with uh, blockchain technology today is a dilemma to open source or not to open source. Because if you if you keep your blockchain uh, closed source or at least partially closed source, then there is the issue of uh, uh, of trust. How can people trust that you don't have a backdoor? Or right. uh, okay, uh, but if you open source. Then you have another problem that people clone your technology and does not give you any anything back in return. And on top of that, create a token that competes with you. Like yeah. take uh, Litecoin and Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum Classic and Ethereum and so on. And NXT probably has dozens of clones or, or had some of them. Um, with, um, with Ardor, we are planning to to try to solve this in a way that we still Ardor will be open sourced it will the source will be released when we deploy Ardor to mainnet but we will deploy it using a special open source license that we call the Gilorida public license okay okay it is based on uh, GPL v2 on the known open source license the viral license that means that if you if you clone you also have to release your clone as open source okay um however um just a second no worries. someone needs to uh j just to finish the sentence um however we add another condition that if you clone the um ardor you also need to provide 10% of the tokens of your new blockchain to existing Ignis holders. Wow. That's, okay. that's, yeah, I, 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 you know, I honestly read, remember reading them. That, that seems really like um, egalitarian, if you will. You're, you're just saying that you're just saying 10% of this token gets distributed over 100% of Ignis holders, sort of, sort of situation. That sound about right. So, just a second. S say again. So, like, if, if someone gives someone clones Ardor and they start their own chain, um, you're saying that the ten percent that they give is then going to be distributed over uh, all of the NXT holders. Exactly. The, the, the Ignis holders. Ignis if you holders. clone Ardor to Ignis holders, if you clone NXT to NXT holders. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, hey, that's it, it's your you, you know you created it and you you created the license that goes with it and uh, you know I'm I don't know how it's gonna work or, or what's I don't know what the, the solution is that's gonna win. But, um, <laughs> I just I just look forward to seeing a lot of different things tried. So, um, so thanks. So so is there any more is there any more you wanna you wanna throw in before we wrap it up? Um. Okay. So so. Um, okay, so, so this open source license, I, I, I think, and, and I hope it will be adapted by other uh, uh, blockchain projects, because I think it makes a lot of sense not to allow cloners just to, you know, to get away with it and not contribute anything back to the original project that they cloned. So thank you so much. Thanks, JJ. It was a pleasure. 
Thank you for listening to NeoCash Radio. As always, check out our website at neocashradio.com for the latest episodes and interviews. NeoCash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. Thank you.